So we've seen um, multiple large studies, well-controlled studies, that the amount of sugar in your diet has direct activity in terms of your criminal behavior, your propensity to violent acts, and to antisocial behavior. And we're consuming more than ever. 57% of this sugar comes from processed foods. It's not putting a spoon of sugar in your coffee. It's hidden in your foods, particularly processed foods. The leading source of all sugar in the, in the American diet is fruit juices and sodas. 43% of all the sugar is coming from those two sources. And if you go anywhere, there's young people, they're drinking sodas. But you think, from what people say, it's mostly young people. But if you look at the ads from Coca-Cola and Pepsi, they're all targeted at the young. And what do mothers do when their babies get old enough to start giving them some table food and juice? They give them apple juice, which is about at one of those little uh, cardboard containers. Uh, it's 35 grams of sugar. Uh, uh, orange juice, all the berry juices are extremely high in sugar. So you start your child out early in life getting used to this high sugar intake. Now, since 1974, the consumption of sodas has doubled. So we're drinking more soft drinks than ever before. Teenagers are drinking an equivalent of 54 teaspoons of sugar a day, just from the sodas. The nutritionists say that your limit should be 10 teaspoons a day. So they're consuming about five times more than that. And of course, some are 10 times that. Uh, you have these great big drinks that you get at uh, McDonald's, and uh, they think nothing of drinking them. Uh, that's the thing to do. If you're thirsty, you drink something that has sugar in it. Study from UNC at Chapel Hill, they looked at adults aged 49 to 50 and found that they increased their intake of soft drink consumption 250%. So it's not just the young people. And ironically, when they looked at those over age 60, they had increased it 300%. Well, metabolically, we know when you consume a lot of sugar, what it does is it dramatically increases the free radical generation in your brain. And it produces cross-linking of the proteins in all of your cells that dramatically increases the damaging effect of these free radicals. The bottom line is it makes every cell in your body age uh, much, much faster, particularly brain cells. People who consume a lot of calories, particularly in sugar, their incidence of Alzheimer's disease is about six times higher than everybody else's. So your caloric intake, particularly in sugar, has more to do with Alzheimer's disease than a lot of things that uh, people think are related. It's estimated that 50% of the population in the United States has reactive hypoglycemia. What this means is if you eat something with sugar or drink something with sugar, your blood sugar will fall dramatically because of an over-secretion of insulin it gets so low, you start getting these symptoms of being very anxious, angry, trembly, weak, uh, where you feel like you just have to hurry up and eat something with sugar in it, uh, or you're going to pass out. And some people do pass out and have seizures, and some people die from reactive hypoglycemia. And again, it goes back to sugar, stimulates insulin release, which causes hypoglycemia, which stimulates the adrenal glands to create cortisol, epinephrine, norepinephrine, makes the brain secrete glutamate, the excitotoxin, and all of this results in hyperactive behavior. But it also results in permanent brain damage. Now, numerous studies have shown there's a close correlation between alcohol abuse, hypoglycemia, and criminal behavior. If you look at the most violent felons in prison,